नमस्कार वेलकम टू अपनी कहानी स्ट्रगल टू सक्सेस टुडे वी हैव वंडरफुल ब्यूटीफुल गेस्ट काउंसलर पुष्पिता गुप्ता जी फ्रॉम यूके वेलकम पुष्पिता जी थैंक यू नमस्ते नमस्ते होप यू आर डूइंग वेल मे आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू शेयर योर लाइफ जर्नी आई वाज बोर्न इन बांग्लादेश बोर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप इन बांग्लादेश सो ओबवियसली आई वाज बोर्न इन ए हिंदू फैमिली and uh, for that reason um, it was always a uh, some kind of like um, tension or worrying in 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 my family families and with my mom and actually uh, my father and my grandfather both were freedom fighter on the 19 during uh, the liberation war 1971 so that's why uh, my mom uh, was very uh, patriotic and uh, she was in bangladesh and my father died a uh, very young age as well so my mom had the opportunity to move to india but uh, with her children but she never uh, decided to or she never wanted to actually she was in pure love with bangladesh and this is how my upbringing because uh, my uncle was a, a leader for communist party and uh, and all his life i saw him just serving serving the community helping people and doing good things and uh, lots of uh, political leaders around us and this this is where I I grew up and uh, and 1997 I uh, I met my husband in uh, Bangladesh and I, we got married I came to uh, Manchester in uh, uh, in in UK and my husband is actually uh, born and brought up in in uh, Manchester so it was a, a very much a cultural clash between us and uh, not only between us so when I came to Manchester and old time I see uh, the culture from uh bangladeshi community and work the culture for me is completely different as well even though we we all are bengalis and it's about, it was a cultural clash but since then i really wanted to do something for people who were um were been suffered from um, nine, during 1971 and there was a if you had the word a bilangona the ladies who were raped and, um, and during 1971 by pakistani uh pakistani armies and also they do have a families but they couldn't go back to their families and some of them have the children and uh, and they they are called birangona so um, in my sense from a very young age i always um, felt like they are not birangona they are the freedom fighters because they given they sacrifice everything for the country so i really wanted to help with uh, work with them and know them very well you know as that was my dream when i came to london and uh, when i came to london i started writing uh, in a newspaper that was my first first thing to do for the country and because i realized the uh, the people who are living in Bang uh, london from bangladesh the bengali uh, bengali community they very lacking so of their knowledge about bangladesh uh, and then bangladesh culture and, uh, and we have very very rich culture in bangladesh we have uh, people you know and people given their lives for the language so i really wanted to brought this up and in a wider society western society so they know what actually bangladeshi culture and that how i this is how i started doing things in in london what inspired you to do all these things uh, it's it's actually is within is if something have have you within yourself then you will you will you will come out eventually whatever you do and what how you do it eventually it will come out because as i have told you before because when i came to london i see the cultural clash because i'm from bangladesh silet i do respect with all the silet people but i felt like there was a cultural gap between me myself and the culture uh, the bangladeshi community in in manchester or in old town so uh, the my it was a big fight actually because i used to write in a newspaper and uh, i used to um i got a job in um, oldham council and uh, so soon i came to uk so oldham when i started my work and then i saw a lot of like things no actually it's not bangladeshi culture or it's not bengali words because as you know hindis and hindi and urdu are quite similar uh, but bengali is bengali got their own language and people given lives for the language so when the bengali books in uh, the council or the, the providing in the uh, the libraries uh, the wordings are like not bengali they are kind of like in hindis or urdus mainly urdus like we call parents uh, father and mother we call ma baba and ma word is ma is comes from within yourself it comes from your heart but in the book it says amma 
I might say what well, uh, do what. So that that was that. You know, like if, if you have something you're proud to be proud of yourself or you you're proud to be Bengali. So you want to promote. You know, this is not the Bengali word. This is a this is a Urdu word. So this is how I started my uh, journey. As I have told you before, I I always wanted to work for uh, Birangon as uh, the freedom fighters, lady freedom fighters in Bangladesh. So I started um, talking about wherever I go, I started talking about them. And, uh, and uh, by the way, I was a law student. I wanted to study law. So I started <laughs> studying law, but then uh, my husband got transferred to Norway in, uh, in another country. So I moved there. And then kind of uh, I started learning language because it was mandatory to learn uh, Norwegian when you are, we live in Norway. So I, I was doing that as well as I was starting, uh, started doing this, um, raising awareness about these ladies who sacrificed during 1971. And I actually successfully gathered so many Bangladeshis in, in Norway and they, uh, they created a Bangladeshi society and I was involved in there. And then my daughter was born in, uh, in, in Norway, in Oslo. So that kind of like a uh, little bit, if you go out, if you see the world, if you meet other people, this is the best way to actually, um, you, you improve yourself and you gather your knowledge and also whatever your intention. Because I remember I, uh, I live in a like really a nice flat, but the flat was uh, full of like elderly people. They're like youngest one probably would have been 70. So I used to go out with them for shopping, I used to help them and I used to talk about Bangladesh, I used to talk about my culture, I used to talk about my music and, the, and then yeah, importantly I used to talk about these freedom, freedom fighters, these ladies who sacrificed their lives in Bangladesh. So it was like always in there and then inspire, if you, if you talk about inspire, what inspired me, I, I would go for my uh, mother and my uncle Pandalal Sherm and from, because you, I see you on YouTube, I want people to know my mother's name as well, my mom's name was uh, Juthi Kashum, late Juthi Kashum, and her maiden name, uh, the nickname was Jui. So, um, so I actually inspired me because we had struggles in our lives and uh, we, our house was um, grabbed by a neighbor. Uh, we had a big messy, uh, you know, everybody got a village home in back home. So we had a village home that was grabbed by Muslim neighbor. And it, it was a struggle all the time. It was a struggle, but my mom used to smile. Never was like, she was, like quiet or she was sad she always wanted to start the community she wanted to help community and my uncle always given me the the what is called opportunity to learn and go out do things i i was never told you cannot do this you cannot do that i was never told and it was never necessary to tell me what i should be doing or i should not be doing so i had the opportunity to explore myself and do things for my country do things for my community so i think if you if you say really inspire that is my mother and my uncle my uncle Panala Shum. It's uh, always the uh, mom and dad are the first teacher of uh, every person. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have memories of my father because he died very early age and uh, I don't have any memories, but I don't even have a picture, you know, so oh, those days. Right. So, uh, so uh, obviously I hear, I had a lot of things for my mother about my father, obviously. So that's why if I, if I talk about my father, I will be talking about my uncle, Panala Shom, because he was the one who guided me, giving me the love, giving me everything I needed when I was in Bangladesh in my childhood. So our sincere regards to your mom and uh, your mother and uh, your uncle. Yeah. Uh, you are the counselor in the uh, UK. So what is your main role and what is your profession and what kind of work you are doing there? Okay, <clears throat> professionally, um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a special needs teacher for a primary school. And uh, so if I come back to what, what inspired me, uh, because um, when I was in Norway, Norway is a country of children it's a beautiful beautiful country god gifted country you know like you see everywhere it's all like artistic very artistic and then you see there was some uh, children of autism autistic some other problems they're born with other problems and uh, i always in my mind you know like if i, do, I if, if i do something i will be doing for um, for uh, young people uh, the people who who actually need our help so when I started my um, early years, like I'm an early years teacher, so when I started my uh, early years, uh, and uh, we had to do placement, we have to go to different schools uh, to do the placement. So every time I do placement in a different school, I don't know why uh, <laughs> the, those uh, special needs children attracted by me. So they were like really close to me and they, you know, sometimes they're very hyper, so they come, they are calmer when they see me around. And I, I started enjoying, enjoying um, working with these children. 
so that moment i i we have a choice if you want to go for a higher education or if you want to if you have a path after one year or two years of your education so i choose that uh, special needs i i want to work with special needs not many people do that so i remember we were like more than 100 100 students i dropped you know, like with special needs i think seven of us only choose to do special needs so this is my professionally i'm a special needs teacher for a primary school and in terms of my uh, council job, um, as I have told you, I passionately try to help people. I passionately try to uh, be there for my community. Uh, and whenever they need, I, I should be there, especially elderly people or young young people and young families. And that COVID given us really, really, really uh, bad experience. All of us, COVID was a really proper struggle, uh, I think, for everybody, everybody's life. So, so when COVID started, and I, in my mind, how can I help community? Because I can see clearly COVID is really come something something not variable and people are really struggling. So I started my voluntary work. So one one evening I was um, I was I got a call and asked, you know, because there was a counselor who passed away during COVID. He had other problems during health problems, but he died in COVID uh, uh, just a year ago, and. Um, and then I was asked, do you want to go for, do you want to apply for, uh, to be a counsellor? And I was not really sure. So I remember I asked the first person, my, uh, my friend, I would say my best friend, uh, Atish. So I asked him, what do you think? And he said, why are you asking me? You must go, you know, you, you, no question about it. Just go and do it. And I said, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you've got to do it. So I applied for it. And when I applied for it, I thought apl applying for being a counsellor, for the election purposes and it's an experience so i gone through all these procedures and thinking it is an experience and then finally you know like the, when the election day comes and and so i must must mention when i, I become a candidate to be a counselor the amount of su uh, support i got it from my community uh, not my only bangladeshi community indian community english community everybody just loved it and they come forward and to help me out so the, I actually become a councillor last May, uh, the 6th, uh, so when we had a by-election and a mayoral election, so that became a, uh, became a councillor for Seven Kings and is in Redbridge. And I can understand year. why people uh, support you, love you, because you <laughs> always think about the community and support to others, helps to others. So that's why people need uh, like you. Thank you um, for the time. As you know that our uh, platform name is uh, Apni Kahani Struggle to Success. So I would like to ask a uh, very personal questions. Yeah, sure. You, uh, had you ever uh, st most struggle uh, time in your life? If yes, then how you overcome that situation? Uh, I had many, many uh, struggle time. I was at, when I was little, obviously when we is in a shock that our, our home being dropped by Muslim neighbors and then we couldn't do anything about it. That moment it was a struggle. But then again, uh, even mm -hmm. I lost my father very early age, but my childhood was childhood was uh, full of fun, uh, full of joyful. And because my I have five siblings, uh, my four sisters and a brother, and then my uncles and aunties, they all giving me the love I needed when I was little. So struggle was there, but actual struggle, I think when I came to, uh, UK when I as I've told you is a cultural clash and, and my expectation was something and, and it happened something and I got married and it was a proper <laughs> struggle in a way anyway but um, I always wanted to improve myself I always I, I didn't I always wanted to do something for myself and do something for the community obviously but I didn't want to depend on, on someone uh, my one problem I have that is respect when I when I respect people, even they are wrong, I still, I, I don't say anything. So that was my, my biggest weakness. So that's why I, I think I, uh, I struggled and I'm still struggling because some of this decision I can actually um, make it. Yeah, I'm independent, I can make it, but I cannot make it because I respect, because I respect surrounding uh, whatever is, you know, surrounded by me. And then I think if I do this, that will hurt him. If I do this, that will hurt her. So that makes me sometimes, that's my biggest weakness. But then how did I overcome? Uh, <laughs> uh, overcoming is actually when you, when you see there is no other way you can, you can come out of this, the struggle, but only way you can come out to look after yourself and do, do something you love or do focus something you you passionate about it. So I actually from 2003, 
I realized that I have to do something. I have to be busy. I have to be busy. I have to be, I have to think about my career. I have to do other things. And this is how I started uh, doing things like I formed my uh, organization called Secular Bangladesh Movement UK. Secular Bangladesh Movement uh, is based on like we promote secularism, uh, not only in Bangladesh, and we, we talk about secularism in, in the community in UK. We do seminars in House of Parliament. I go to United Nations and uh, talk about what is actually happening in Bangladeshi Hindus. So when you have a struggle and then you passionate about something, that struggle becomes weaker. So you 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 put that aside and thinking, you know, like, you know, this is not nothing big. I can I can I can handle that and I can focus on. So if you have focus and you, that struggle become weaker and the job I do in terms of uh, secular Bangladesh movement when I go to Bangladesh and looking after Hindus who are deprived or who are struggled or who are being tortured for their religion. So when I go there, there was kind of another struggle because you, you put your life in a risk. Uh, every moment you don't know who is coming, who is doing it, who is going to attack you, who is going to kill you or something. Something is always, there was a struggle. But then again, if, because I'm passionate about it, I do not worry about that too much because somebody might attack me, somebody might do something, you know, so I do not, I do, I'm not worried about it anymore. I used to be, but now I feel like I'm not worried about it anymore because I'm in a state, I'm in a situation now, I can only go forward, no backwards, and whatever in happening on the side was the struggle, and then that affects me. I'm not saying it doesn't affect me, it does affect me, but I have many good things to focus on. So I'm focusing on good thing and what inspires me and what motivates me, what, and people who love me, I'm being with them, rather than people who are negative. And I totally agree with you that uh, in such situation, we just go forward, don't look back, yeah. As um, you are doing uh, good things, so uh, a lot of people will love you, <laughs> support you, you know, in your movement. And if you are talking about the struggle, struggle was always, always there. The, the as I have told you before, my childhood was like uh, growing up, thinking uh, my mom was always worried about because she got five girls, and uh, she, you know, like how, how she going to cope with, uh, you know, like with five girls, young girls, and. And then obviously our home was grabbed by the neighbor and we could never get it back and nobody was there to help us. One morning I woke up, um, I, you know, I, I'm from Hindu community. So when in every Hindu community, they, the mothers wake up very early morning, they put that, you know, all this um, shonko and all that, uh, you know, the temple things in the morning that people wake up from that. So that day I didn't hear anything in, the, in my temple. So I woke up and I saw my mom was, lying down in the in the her temple and crying and i it, it, i was very young but you know like you see meat everywhere what what is it why is it and then my mom said what have i done wrong why did they put beef in my temple my after my dad passed away my mom become very very uh, uh, devotee you know like she was she was like really into gods and prayers and all that and then one morning how would you feel if you wake up and you're temples, the temple, your life and everything in this temple, this God means everything to you. And you see beef is, is in, the t in, the, in your temple. And since then, she, I cleaned that. I cleaned it myself, the temple. I cleaned, I moved and everything to make my, my mom happy. But then she never recovered from it because she had then after that, uh, she had a stroke. And I, we never realized it was a stroke. We never realized because she was sad. She had high blood pressure. She was like two days. She was in a bed. <clears throat> she was given saline. Nobody realized she had the stroke. And then, if, like she was really, really upset. I think week or two weeks later, we took her to a doctor uh, in Dhaka, and then they said she had a stroke. So my mom actually never recovered from that. The in the incident, and she never recovered from physically and mentally. And do you think um, as her daughter, knowing how my mom was? I, I would say my mom was actually killed. Yes, yeah, she had she had a normal death, but she was killed. Mentally, she was killed because she never recovered from it. And mm -hmm. my family, we never, I never recovered. I, you know, like after so many years, I, I'm still talking about it. After 30 years, I'm still talking about it. Killed by Yeah, and, and that makes me emotional. That makes me sad. That makes me angry. That makes me angry, very, very angry. At some point, yeah, <clears throat> if you know, I was in hunger strike. Uh, uh, in in November, in December, in uh, how, uh, in front of Bangladesh High Commission, and the people were coming, and then I said, "Why are you doing that?" And I, I said, "I'm doing that for my mother because when she was alive, I couldn't do anything for her. I was too young." 
and people didn't know. I want people to know. I want the whole world to know. They killed my mother, and my mother's name is Yutika Shu, and they did. They did kill her. They did kill her. Even a lot of my neighbors, they, we still have in contact with them. We still and we used to call each other like uncles and aunties, and we like very very close. But they didn't do anything about it. They didn't come to say sorry to my mother. Even you thinking these people are your family, their neighbors, their family. That doesn't matter. They're your neighbor. They're your, this is what my mother used to teach us. Every time the puja time, we touch our feet. We used to go to my neighbor's house to touch their feet to do the pranam. So that much respect we used to do each other. And then that happened to my mother. Nobody was there for my mother. Why? So that is that is this uh, the frustration within it myself will never go away. I don't think it will ever go away. When that was the we had a demonstration back in December uh, in in the, in a House of Parliament and in November actually, and I was like screaming, doing the slogan, and all I said, justice for my mother, justice for my mother, because she didn't get the justice. Why people say you Islamic for me? Uh, because uh, because I talk about it, I have many many good good Muslim friends. I have two names I must mention: Ansar Ahmedullah, who lives in the UK, and who has been working so hard to get him, you know, this uh, to promote secularism in Bangladesh and to get Hindus justice. He has been working so hard. Another friend of mine, uh, he is um, T M Ahmed Kaiser, and he's a promoter in he, uh, the Bengali Bengali culture. He's a big man, and he has been he has been. Uh, trying to help me so much. So I have many good Muslim friends. I have also organized in my house, in my house, the, you know, the Ramadan time, you know, when one month fasting time, I also organized uh, the iftar. Iftar means when they break their first. So I, I organized, I cook myself and I invite all my Muslim friends, Hindus friends and Christians, all them together in my house. Then, but so, but my is, question is when you do a lot of things, then why yeah, do you say you- Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I do all of things, still people think because I talk about it. People don't like to talk about it. My neighbor, uh, my neighbor who, who loves me, they will say, if you talk to them today, they will say, I love Prashpita. I love them too. But my question is when we were struggling, my, when my family was struggling, when my mother was struggling when my mother was killed where were you why you are being quiet and still a lot of i'm not saying lot people are not nice lot of lots of muslim people are very very secular very very broad-minded they are in they are in favor of hindus they're good people but when hindus are being killed when the hindus are getting tortured they're not saying anything they're being quiet i find personally feel and i personally tell people even in my school even my colleagues even my friends i tell everybody you say i'm not racist yeah i believe you but when you see somebody being racial attacked and you're not doing anything for me you are a racist if you are being quiet and you're seeing there is something wrong going on and you're not doing anything you are part of this wrongdoing you're part of it so it's still this time it's still this time people are get, getting killed thank you very lots of lots of good people university professors there are uh, actor actresses singers so there are lots of good people in bangladesh and uh, i have a lot of good good friends as well but why if you are being quiet if i'm being killed and you're being quiet you know my good friend then you're not being my friend because this is what i i feel if if you're seeing somebody doing wrong thing and you're being quiet you are part of this wrongdoing yeah, if you're saying I'm not racist, yes, I believe you're not racist, but they do something about it. Your action, your actions will tell me you are not racist. If you say I'm not racist, then it doesn't bother me. But I will, you will, I will believe you're not racist when your actions, your actions it works and your actions speaks up that you are not racist. Yeah, so I would, I would tell people, please know what is actually happening in Bangladesh, what is actually happening in Hindus in Bangladesh. Please uh, let people know let people know talk about it everywhere you go every opportunities you have take the opportunity to talk about bangladeshi hindus even pakistani hindus because they are getting tortured every single day they are getting killed like last week five brothers were killed five brothers in one household five brothers because they wanted to build a temple so they were killed please do talk about it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be a minister doesn't have to be mp doesn't have to be you talk about your neighbors you talk talk about it to your friend let people know what is actually happening in this in Bangladesh, please. And this is what I urge you in, to your program. Please know what the Bangladeshi history. Please know the Hindu sacrifice in Bangladesh since 1947, how much they sacrificed and what they are going through the present days. Please know about it. Please learn about it. Please research about it and talk about it. Talk to your friend. Talk to anybody. 
and that will help. This is the only way we can help Hindus in Bangladesh. Thank you very much for your time and it's a beautiful talk. And uh, thanks to the audience also for being with us. If you have any questions, please write here so that um, uh, Puspita Guptaji will uh, write here. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe and like, share. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste.